Hi, Bethany here with Dogger Size Dog Training. I'm here to talk to you about Comet, an adorable little Cocker Spaniel. Uh, he's about a year to two years old, which is a really typical age to start uh, seeing some leash reactive issues on the walk. Now, he's previously had some anxiety issues like pacing in the house and, and just overexcitement and piddling and things like that. Um, so this is kind of a really good example of how little things like that, that maybe you're just, you know, letting go, um, can build and build and build, and before you know it, your dog is like Comet, where he starts barking at other dogs on the walk and barking at uh, men as well. And that's that's not usually characteristic of him. Uh, he's very friendly towards people and dogs, so this was something uh, really bizarre that, that started happening, but it's something that I see a lot. When people start to let those little things go with an anxious or nervous dog, these other things develop. Now, I'm not saying that always happens. There are lots of dogs where um, you can let them get away with a few things and, and it's no big deal, um, but unfortunately, a lot of times, that's just not the case. So if you start to see uh, the behaviors you're about to see, if you start to see them in your dogs, just just take notice that you might want to be start to be a little bit more strict on on behaviors uh, just in the house as far as being needy and and pacing and not being able to settle. Um, uh, one more thing that I want to mention is uh, I had a really great opportunity uh, to work with him uh, with the owners uh, out of the way. And uh, we worked on threshold and the, the two different scenarios that I got versus him leading me out the door, which is what he's used to, or me having him wait and lead him out the door uh, was pretty amazing. So you're actually going to see his, his true nature when I just kind of let him lead the way, and then you're going to see the transformation. Um, and, and it's pretty incredible. So I made sure to include the threshold training in this video because, because walking on a leash is not just about outside. It starts in the house when you grab that leash. Um, so, so it's really important to start with that. And I was going to make two different videos, but, but it ended up uh, just working so well for for the point that I wanted to get across, I included it all in. So I know the video is a little bit longer, but uh, please, please watch it. And if you start to see, you know, these signs in your dog, start to nip them in the bud really fast. Okay, so this is the bad behavior. This is when he uh, just did what he normally does, which is uh, just pull on out, which he's usually on a, on a harness, but he, he would have been even worse <laughs> on a harness. So I just put him on a slap buckle pot collar. You heard a little bark there at my camera guy. And see, he just puts the brakes on. He does not want to go. Now, this shows the deep-rooted issues with a reactive dog on the walk, which is just anxiety, fear, um, really uncertain. So I kind of give him a moment. And I thought maybe it was Chris, but he even persisted right there too. Chris, my camera guy, but it was it was just the act of doing it in general. And then he did what he normally does, which is pull and sniff. And um, he's completely out of tune with me. I might as well not even be there. I'm just someone, you know, to take him outside. Uh, really out of tune with me. So normally he barks at other dogs and he barks at men, but he is not aggressive. He's definitely not an aggressive dog, which you're going to see. He's incredibly sweet, but this act of being put in the leadership role makes him a little crazy. So uh, some dogs just can't handle it. Most dogs can't handle it. So this is him. This is normally what he does. Nose on the ground, just, just uh, really out of tune with me. The tension on the leash causes that anxiety to where he reacts to other dogs. So here I have him sit, which he knows is basic obedience. I do a little bit of, of blocking. See with my leg there? It didn't take much though. He knew just to stay right with me. The leash is loose. He's on a slip leash now too. I took him off of his flat buckle collar. And then once he can stare out of an open door without me right in front of him, um, he's good to go. Now, even just because I move forward does not mean he gets to move forward. So that's why I reset him. And then I'll say, okay, let's go. And then we'll move out the door. Now, I'm not, preferably not giving a lot of commands here. I really want him to just figure out, figure this out on his own, just using a little bit of the body blocking, the spatial pressure. Now, look at his demeanor. 
look, his tail is wagging. And look, he's right with me. So his confidence is already better. That was the, no joke, the first time we did it. So his confidence is already better from the moment we step out the door just with me leading the way. It completely can change the, the mind frame. Now once we're outside, he's going to go back to doing what he normally does, which is sniff. There's no magic pill. The collar doesn't, you know, magically stop him from doing that, the slip leash. So we're, I just put it high on his neck that you saw there. And we're just doing turnarounds um, or, or 180s, however you want to look at it. So every time he pulls... Um, in front of me, I turn around, and then when he decides to come in my direction, I loosen the leash. So I'm not using uh, pop corrections at this point, it's just a little bit of leash pressure. And if you want a much more detailed video on this, please um, check down below. There should be a link right here as well. But please check down below, and there's a really in-depth video on how to do this with the slip leash. Um, and I've just sped this up so, so it doesn't take forever. But you can see how we just turn circles. And what you're doing is you're just settling the dog down. And you're not allowing him to go in front of you. So now you notice there's a much jittery energy. And that's because we've introduced the, the owner to the scenario. And as you can see from this video, see all that, that coddling up? Now sometimes that's just um, a way of wanting to uh, you know, get attention in a positive way, but in this case, because we know the history and the state of mind of the dog, we know that it's more about being needy and nervous and anxious and unsure. And notice how he will not listen to her. He really, he's so on edge, just jittery, overexcited, that he can't listen. He can't um, retain the information she's trying to tell him. And it's because their brain hasn't settled enough and because she represents or the owner represents so much um, overexcitement that it's difficult for him to, to understand. He's not doing it to be mean or a bad dog. He just can't, he really can't do it based off of the body language that's happening. So this is me. I put him on a, a mat that we just pulled out from under there. Um, because he does not go to his mat, so I thought it might help. So that was me that put him in a sit, and I want you to notice what happens when it's m me that does it, when it's myself. So she starts heading towards the door, and he's not getting up, and he doesn't get up. Now, that's not, I'm not trying to say, ooh, amazing me. That, that really isn't it. It's because I don't have an emotional history with the dog. He's not used to behaving um, that way around me. So as far as he's concerned, what I say is is gold. Uh, it, what I say goes and he's not going to argue with it. Um, so whenever you're an owner and you have these habits with your dog and you always feed into these uh, bad behaviors you, that you may not even realize it, you know, constantly feeding into the, the neediness, this is what can happen. I see this all the time and it's nothing, it's nothing even major until all of a sudden it is, until all of a sudden they're barking at other dogs and they're not trusting humans. Um, so if you start to see some of these behaviors from your dog, uh, just just keep, keep this in mind because if your dog is a more insecure type dog, this is right around the bend for you and you can nip it in the bud really fast by doing some of these uh, really small things that make a huge impact. Waiting at the door, walking properly on a leash, and not always feeding into that overexcitement. Um, there's also dogs in the back that are barking. There's a cat around here as well, so he's got a lot to contend with. Um, that really makes it really difficult for him to settle. Now, since I'm the one who sat him down, um, we didn't go outside yet, and I give him a little break um, and before we started again and had her do it. Now, notice how much sharper she is in her movements now. I mean, it's kind of like she's she's had it. You know, she's over this constant popping up and, and uh, you know, burrowing into her. So she's much crisper and cleaner with her movements. Not angry. She wasn't angry. She was just very no-nonsense. Very, uh, you know, like how you handle your teenage kids. Just, just go do your homework. That's just the way it is kind of attitude. Um, and that's what you really need here is not a lot of emotion. Very matter of fact. And look at that. So, so we want to do the, the spatial blocking until we can completely step out away from the door. 
and him just relax looking at an open door and not rushing that's the goal here and then right there we were just stopping at every uh, every platform to make it easier to just kind of put his energy in check going down the stairs okay so this is me walking him uh, without doing the turnarounds as you can see he's doing really good um, I'm trying to kind of hold the leash out so you can see that there's two to three inches of slack and and that's it okay so that way he can't get that far out ahead of me um, I know he's putting his nose on the ground still constantly but you know you can't have all the miracles in one day so I'll take what I can get um, I put my leg in front right there because the dog was coming up so we readjust the collar because he started to pull more so I just used my leg for, for blocking um, and then we stopped I readjusted the collar and you can see he's trying to get around me on you know different sides of me so he can get a better view because I'm not letting him pull forward that's just a little bit of fight back it's really typical so you saw the correction I gave him now right here I'm speaking to the lady and honestly my leash is a little tight I catch it right there and I give a little slack but uh, but it's so important that the leash is is loose um, but this was amazing that we had this kind of organic dog, you know, walk down the street and, um, and a neighbor and say, wow, he's not barking. <laughs> so that was really great. So you can see the leash is loose. Now, this is what is happening. Because he is not in a leadership role and he is in a calmer state of mind. Perfect? No, absolutely not. But he is just in a calmer state of mind in general. And when that happens, we get to see more of the dog that he really is, which is a really sweet dog that actually really likes other dogs. And that's what you got to see there. If you, if you look back again at this, you'll see he's actually reaching out and sniffing. There's no barking. Now, he did pull quite a bit going back up the hill, but that's because he was overexcited by seeing the dog and he was pulling to mom and dad, and that's typical. So I was just a little... I was, uh, you know, more strong with him. Instead of just correcting him every time he pulled, we stopped and sat. I'm just constantly keeping his right. energy in check. So now mom is doing it. You got too much leash, so just shorten your... There you go. Very good. Good. See, you caught that one early, that typical sniffing and stopping. Because when he gets nervous or anxious, Dogs will really use that as a coping mechanism and really pull into a smell, you know, and not want to go with you. You got to look at these little opportunities when he tries to bite something off the ground or when he tries to sniff. You've got to look at them as these small opportunities to take leadership. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go ahead and turn and just say, let's go. Let's go. And start moving. Good. See, so your pace is much better. Nope, pop it. Yeah, there you go. Good. Oh, yeah, he's really sniffing off the ground. Good. Very good. Good. Very good. All right, turn around and come back. And you guys just cross again. So good. Closer, keep closer to him this time, Chris. Stay on the same sidewalk. So hopefully what you've learned from this is that when you take that leader position away from a dog um, that may seem like he's, you know, hyper anxious or even aggressive, um, a lot of times you find a really sweet, loving, insecure pooch underneath. Um, so the important part now is for the family to stay really consistent and work through those hard spots because there's going to be plenty of them. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can email me at info at doggersizela.com or check out the website doggersizedogtraining.com. Comment does have a video uh, on food issues, uh, so if you want to check that out, you can click right here. Or if the link's not here on the page for some reason, it will be down below in the information. And don't forget to subscribe.